During season 11 of Overwatch 2, we are getting a new quick play hacked. But what is it going to change exactly? Let's have a look. The trailer for season 11 was packed with a ton of information. And in between the new map announcement and the reveal of the next Hero Masteries, there was a 4 second flash of a new quick play hacked titled Pickable Passives. Now this tells us something but not nearly enough to really know what's going on. I do think however that this might be a big one. In the next frame of that trailer we see Farah flying around on Dorado, swooping into the courthouse accompanied by Diva, and they are attacking the enemy Doomfist and Symmetra. Just a normal day on Dorado. But not thing to help us figure this out except for the fact that on the screen we can read choose your role based upgrades hmm that's exactly why I think this might be something that is bigger than anything we've tested before. Now, that being said, it could be a wide range of things. On one end, they could go all paladins on us and let us upgrade specific abilities, almost like preparing a loadout. But I don't think that is going to be the case. I think it would just kind of overcomplicate the game. I don't think that is what we need. On the other end of the spectrum, it's really simple. You get to choose which passive you want, the DPS passive, the tank passive, or the support passive. But I don't think it's going to be that one either, because that would give us close to nothing. I really think that we're going to land somewhere in the middle of that, where every role will get three options for their passive, and we'll get to pick one at the start of the match after we picked our hero. I mean, it literally says choose your role-based upgrades. It makes sense. But what could these options be? Well, I think some of them might include some of the former passives that we have seen in the past, like the faster run speed for DPS. But there might also be a few brand new ones. See, once you give people options on which passive they'll choose, you don't really have to make sure that it fits everybody. If a certain passive does not fit the hero that you picked, change the passive. It also gives players more control over that one hero they want to play. To a certain extent, it might even help with counterplay. If we're going to be allowed to change our passive the same way we are allowed to change hero, which I really think is going to be the case, we might see players stick to Genji but choose a different passive that will give them more use out of the projectiles and that way they can deal with the enemy far. For instance, I mean, I'm just thinking out loud here, but you get the gist. And yeah, at that point, we still get counterplay, but on a different level, where you change the hero's strengths, but his vulnerabilities will still be the same. I guess it's more of a nuanced counterplay, and it does allow players to play the heroes they want to play without sabotaging the game. It will also allow players to play their main hero in the way they enjoy it the best. For instance, the more defensive Reinhardt can fortify that playstyle with a more defensive passive, while the more aggressive Reinhardt can sacrifice some of that defense and trade it for something that will give him more presence. After which, they'll start complaining about the healing. But yeah. Tell me, what passives would you like to pick for your role? Let me know in the comments. Now, the risk of all of this is that on one side, yeah, sure, it's going to add extra tools to the designer's kit to balance all of these heroes. But it's also going to be an extra parameter that they need to take into account. On top of that, for every single hero, there's going to be passives that are going to be considered a must pick by the community. Which on one end will not help with the perception issue and on the other hand, might trigger some toxic behavior. But there are ways around that. In any case, I'm pretty excited for this quick play hack. And it will give me something to do in that pre-game phase other than destroying the spawn point. But I still have a lot of questions. But we'll hopefully get an answer by July 15th when this quick play hack is going live. Now for now we don't know if it's going to replace the normal quick play or if it's going to be a separate card. My guess would be on the second because I think it's enticing enough for people to try it out and also kind of disruptive for those people that only have like a few days a month to play the game. As soon as we know more I'll update you guys right here on Instagram and on Twitter. For now however, that was it. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. It really helps me out. And I want to thank my patrons and could not make these videos without you guys. You have my eternal gratitude. If you have a few minutes left, check out this video. Click it. But above all, take care of yourself, take care of each other. Bye bye.